against a team from Toronto, Canada. We the North are now we the champions. What is going on, Raptors Nation? It is Luca here back with the Raptors Nation podcast on this Thursday, June 13th. Hope you're all doing well. It's been a very lackluster NBA Finals as the Boston Celtics up three games to nothing, just one more win away from becoming the 2024 NBA champs. And I tell you guys, I mean, outside of that Knicks Sixer series, these playoffs have been pretty underwhelming. But we're one more game, it seems, away. I do think uh, the Celtics are going to finish the job and sweep the Mavericks as then we will look ahead officially to the start of next season as all eyes will be on the NBA draft, which of course is the next important dates for this Raptors team. So in this one, guys, I wanted to talk about the Raptors draft. I wanted to talk about some rumors, but first I want to talk about the championship anniversary. And by the way, guys, hit a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, leave us a five-star review wherever you get this podcast on Apple, iTunes, or Spotify. The Raptors championship anniversary, five years ago today, man. Time flies. It is unbelievable that five years have gone by since the Raptors called themselves NBA champions. And I mean, just looking back at that roster, unbelievable how there was a point in time that us Raptors fans actually we're blessed to watch that type of basketball and see that team in action. You know, Kawhi Leonard was the best player in the world, in my opinion, at that time. Kyle Lowry, Siaka making the big time shot, Van Vliet playing a huge role, Abaka, Gasol, so many fond memories never gets old. Whether you watch the second round when the Raptors beat the 76ers and they won off that crazy Kawhi Leonard game winning shot. The Bucks series, Raptors down 0-2. It looks like they're dead in the water. Then they come right back and win the next four to take that series in six. And then they beat and ultimately end the Warriors dynasty in uh, the NBA Finals. I mean, so much to take away. Time has gone by so fast, but just so many great memories, guys. And I mean, I just hope that, you know, we can experience that one more time in our lifetime. And it's not... So long until, yeah, the Raptors are playing in meaningful playoff games and the team has a chance to win a championship. But that squad was special. And I'm not just saying this being obviously a diehard Raptors fan, but you just look at the collection of talent, how things came together, the trades that happened when they did, you know, making the ultimate gamble for Kawhi Leonard, which paid off, making the acquisition of Gasol. That team just playing with so much camaraderie, you know, Kyle Lowry, everything just coming together. The, you know, obviously the, the Van Vliet's and the Siakams of the world having their place too in that postseason run. So it, it was just very, very special. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's always fun to look back and we're going to continue to look back on it because yeah, the Raptors guys, they are etched in the NBA history books. And that is the greatest part of it all. It doesn't matter how many years pass. The Raptors are always going to be known as the 2019 NBA champs and boy, oh boy, was it ever a special time in the city. So wanted to mention this doing this podcast on the anniversary date. But yeah, Raptors championship anniversary. What was your biggest takeaway from that entire playoff run? I'll say this in closing. Kawhi Leonard, I mean, he was the best player in the world at that time. He was on top of the world. The Raptors, if he had stayed, I believe, would have won another one. Looking back at it, Kawhi Leonard, one of my favorite players still to this day, but you look at the decision, guys, one of the worst decisions made by a superstar, simply put. I know he wanted to go home. I knew he had his reasons, you know, family, all that's important. But from his career perspective, Kawhi leaving Toronto to go to the Clippers ended up being detrimental for his career. Because if Kawhi stays in Toronto, I believe the Raptors are in title contention for the next couple of seasons. Kawhi can continue to add to his very, very impressive legacy, which, by the way, at that time, he was, what, 28 years old, had won another championship finals MVP. There was a good case to be made. Hey, maybe Kawhi can crack, you know, the all-time list if he continues the trajectory, but he obviously goes to the Clippers five years later, empty-handed, wasn't able even to get back to an NBA finals. And, uh, yeah, just one of the biggest what-ifs, I think, of, a, you know, where would Kawhi have been right now and where would he have ranked amongst the all-time greats and how many more chips could the Raptors have had and where would the Raptors have been at this point? So there's a lot of hypotheticals, but uh, at least the Raptors were able to get one 
And of course, coached by Nick Nurse, who's now a member of the Philadelphia 76ers. Can't forget about Nick Nurse. He was very, very crucial during that playoff run. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, that's going to put to rest the look back on the Raptors championship. We'll uh, take a revisit back to the championship this time next year. But now let's look at let's look to the future. Obviously, it's about the future when it comes to this Raptors team. They are in the midst of a rebuild. Hopefully, the Raptors can get back to those glory days, and hopefully, it will be the likes of Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett, and Quickly, who are you know key components of the Raptors getting back to the apex. But you look at the Raptors draft, guys. Very, very important. Couple of days coming up, the 26th and 27th. The Raptors are going to have number 19. They're going to have number 31. Um, they're going to have the first pick of the second round. There's been so many names floated and uh, linked to the Raptors. Obviously, the Raptors hosting some workouts. Zach Eady worked out with this team at the OVO Athletic Center not too long ago. He continues to be linked to the Raptors in mock drafts. There are so many different directions the Raptors can take. Will they go with a big? Will they go with a wing? Will they go with a guard? Obviously, there's a lot of needs on this team. And really, I just wanted to go over my preferred selections as of now uh, at number 19 and you know when you look at the Raptors first round pick I do believe the Raptors are going to be able to get a solid talent I mean Darko said it the other day uh, I dropped the video on it also put up an article on RaptorsNation.com basically uh, using Google Translator and Darko said that you know you can still get a, a good player at 15 to 20 uh, versus you know five six seven so it tells you that you know if somebody falls and the Raptors are so happen to be there if they do stay at 19 um, they could end up getting a nice player. So we're going to look at 19 in this one. I, I did do a separate video on my own channel, looking at my preferred targets at 19. Not much has changed. Just wanted to run through kind of what I'm thinking at this point when it comes to the Raptors first round pick. So, you know, obviously Edie is a big name. He continues to be linked to the Raptors and really he's a guy who I would not be surprised if the Raptors take. Edie isn't in my list. But I will mention Edie because I will not be surprised if the Raptors do, in fact, draft Edie. There's obviously interest there. They worked them out. And Edie's a guy who he may even end up going earlier. There's a world where Edie ends up being in the lottery. He's quickly been rising up mock drafts, and rightfully so. You know, he's a very intriguing uh, talent, big man who can absolutely pan out. Raptors need front court depth. So, Edie would not be surprised if the Raptors take him. A little bit of an honorable mention here, but he doesn't crack my list. I'm looking at six guys in particular as of today with that 19 pick. Bob Carrington mentioned it before. I love this guy's game. I think, you know, the Raptors need a shot creator. I like Bob. He's young, super raw, and I really liked how he finished his season. I think he could be a tremendous talent for the Raptors. Isaiah Collier, you know, he can end up being a steal, I think. His draft stock is kind of all over the place. Obviously, he suffered that injury, so it kind of derailed him a bit. But he's a you know he's a a bruiser. He's that spark plug, if you will. He could get downhill. You know he's big. He's physical. I think he would provide some nice uh, guard depth with this Raptors team. That's obviously something that they need. Then when I look at some uh, big man help, which I think is another big area of need for the Raptors, I like Khalil Ware out of Indiana. I think if that three point shot ends up panning out, I know he shot it well, but on low volume, I think that could be huge. Super athletic, big. You know, you look at a guy like Derek Lively, how he's been so impactful for the Dallas Mavericks. I think Khalil Ware can have a similar type of workload to that. You know, he he needs to add more size to his frame, but I really like Ware, and I think his ability to face the floor is very, very useful. Obviously, you know, going to be playing alongside a guy like Scotty Barnes. Um, Yves Missy, very, very capable, you know, defensive starting center. I think that's what he can become. I like him a lot. He's big, nice wingspan, can block shots. I think his defense is very, very superb. So that's another guy I like a lot out of Baylor. Keyshawn George, you know, grew a ton in a short period of time, but this is a guy that can help the Raptors with their outside shooting. The Raptors are going to need more three-point shooting. They're going to need to surround Barnes with, you know, role players who can hit threes. Hopefully, you know, guys like Dick continue to develop that. But I think you look at a guy in Keyshawn George, that is a guy, you know, long athletic wing who can end up being a big uh, get for the Raptors. And I really like the fact that he's able to, you know, shoot, um, you know, whether it's the mid range or again, hit those threes, which I think is a big need of this Raptors team. And then Johnny Furphy, you could look at it as a bit of a redundant pick because they just drafted Grady Dick. But I mean, I would be good with that. I mean, that would actually be like an interesting scenario where all of a sudden you got the two former Kansas Jayhawks coming from off the bench. Furphy, 
going to need to work on his defense. But, you know, he uh, thrived as a starter when he ended up starting for Kansas. That's a guy who can end up, you know, shooting it well. And uh, that would be a little bit of an interesting bench duo leading the second unit with Dick and Furphy. So I, I do like Johnny Furphy. He ju- just cracks my list here when looking at some names at 19. So that's who I'm looking at here. Um, with one of those guys being taken in the spot. Again, Zach Eady, honorable mention, would not be surprised if the Raptors end up taking him. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I do think the Raptors will, in all likelihood, go with a big. But based on the names I just read, I would not be upset if the Raptors end up going with one of these guys. You know, they are going to have some opportunities here to add some intriguing young talent. And that is is if the Raptors end up sticking with their picks. And the reason why I say that is because there's been a a little bit of interesting uh, rumors going on as of late of uh, the Raptors maybe, maybe trading up. I mean, you never know with Masai Ujiri. Seems like the Raptors are always in the heart of trade rumors whenever there's a draft or whenever there's, you know, uh, a season in general. I mean, we just came off so many trade rumors that finally – got put to bed with the trades of uh, Ananobi and Siakam, but the Raptors continue to be in the midst of trade talk as uh, you look at the Raptors guys, uh, they're reportedly looking to move up in the 2024 NBA draft. So this was reported of Kevin O'Connor of the ringer, take it with a grain of salt, but obviously O'Connor still, you know, does a good job digging up what he can uh, in terms of the latest on the rumor mill. He reports that the Raptors are one of three teams, including the Blazers and Cavs, trying to trade up and improve their draft position in the 2024 NBA draft. Obviously, the Raptors missed out on a top six pick when their own first round pick fell to number eight, and it went to San Antonio as per compensation of the Yaka Pirtle trade. Now the Raptors have number 19 and 31. And it's very interesting to me. First, I want to say this. It makes sense for the Blazers because they're in the midst of their rebuild. The Cavaliers as well, because I think they're headed for major changes and they could, you know, look to part ways with Donovan Mitchell and just con- uh, look to, you know, build around guys like Garland and uh, Mobley going forward. But it's interesting with the Raptors because what this tells me is, is there somebody who the Raptors are absolutely obsessed with that they know won't be available in 19 that they would want to trade up to draft? And a name that instantly comes to mind, Zach Eady. Because there's been so much buzz about Edie, and you know, it would not surprise me if he goes uh, late lottery 15 16. Are the Raptors absolutely sold by Edie, impressed by his workout, that they don't want that opportunity to pass them by? Where you know, Edie is right there, and then he gets taken a couple picks before the Raptors. So that's a name that I think could make sense of the Raptors being very much sold with and then wanting to trade up so they can take him before he gets drafted. And then another player, and this just kind of came to mind as I saw this uh, report, this rumor, is uh, Saloon. Uh, This is a guy who's probably going to be taken like 7 to 10, I would say. That's where I've seen him. I know San Antonio reportedly likes him a lot, but this to me is the ultimate Masai Ujiri pick. He's raw, he's young, and with the Raptors situation that they're in, they can take a chance and wait on a developmental prospect that can absolutely pan out for the best over a long period of time. And, I mean, you got to take a chance on these French kids, man. We see the amount of talent they continue to produce, obviously with one Benyama being the icing on the cake, but that's another guy who I think um, or, or see the Raptors being absolutely in love with and knowing that he's gone by the time the first 10 picks happen. So could the Raptors try to move up? And this to me is interesting because basically if the Raptors are trying to trade up, then they really messed up what happened with the whole Yakup Hurdle trade. Because it's one thing to lose the pick, but then you kind of double down by saying, yeah, you really wanted that pick if you try to trade up. And the other thing too is it's not necessarily a good look because Darko literally just finished saying in his interview that he feels you can get the same type of player 15 to 20 then you can five six seven so kind of be contradictory to what Darko the Raptors head coach just said so it wouldn't necessarily be the best of look if the Raptors continued to invest in this draft and try to move up after a they you know put themselves in this position to begin with by making the trade for Yakupurdo and then b Darko making his comments literally a couple days ago so again I'm taking this with a grain of salt I mean Kevin O'Connor with all due respect I don't think he's ever been right in terms of these rumors so I'm not 
putting so much stock into this, but I thought it was interesting. And we know the Raptors track record and Masai Ujiri, they're always in these conversations. They never make moves per se, or it, it comes down to the final moment where they're going to have to make a move before they make a move, but they're always in these conversations. So it does not surprise me if, you know, Masai and company are having these preliminary conversations about, Hey, could we potentially move up? Is there a guy that, you know, we can get who's a much better player and in one of those, uh, a lottery selection. So do I think something's going to happen? Likely not, but it will be interesting because remember there was that report about Bruce Brown, who the Raptors could look to move. Uh, he has a $23 million team option for next season. It was reported that the Raptors are expected to pick that up, but then trade him thereafter. Doug Smith of the Toronto star first reported that. And I do believe that I do think the Raptors are going to pick up that option, and then they're going to look to trade Bruce Brown. I do not see Bruce Brown being on the Raptors before the start of next season. So Brown, he's a valuable rotation player. He's only 27 years old. I think playoff teams uh, would benefit from a guy like him, so there should be interest. In terms of anybody else the Raptors can move, there's not a lot of value, honestly. I don't think the Raptors can get the same value for Chris Boucher or McDaniels. Those are other players I could see the Raptors move on from. And then the, the other guy I can think of, and, and this is an if because they just signed him to that deal last summer, but maybe the Raptors do move on from him, if, especially if they go with a young center at 19 is Jakob Pertl. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about if the Raptors would be willing to trade Pertl and officially, uh, you know, blow it up in the sense where they're going with a, a very young team next season and you ensure that you are not going to be good because we saw this team was uh, not as competitive with Oh Uh Look, you know, you can knock the trade, but, this basketball team is still better with Pirtle, but if the Raptors do want to take a step back so they can they try to improve their draft positioning for next draft, which again, Darko alluded to in that interview, uh, that's somebody who I could see the Raptors moving on from, but the more likelier um, player here to be moved is Bruce Brown. So there is a lot at play. Do I think the Raptors are going to trade up? If you ask me as of today, I'll say no, but hey, nothing will surprise me at this point in terms of who the Raptors draft, like I said, if they end up taking ED and he's still available, I would not be surprised. And if the Raptors end up doing something leading up to the draft or even on draft day of trying to move on up. So we'll see how it all pans out for the Toronto Raptors. But exciting times, guys. The NBA season is winding down. Of course, the NBA Finals could be done as quickly as tomorrow. And then it's off to the offseason. Although we won't have any games to talk about we're going to have a lot of offseason news starting with the draft which again is quickly approaching two weeks away the NBA draft is going to be fun there's going to be a lot at stake and the Raptors are going to have two picks to play with so let me know your thoughts guys that's going to conclude today's pod let me know how you're feeling about the draft do you think the Raptors are going to make a drastic uh, trade beforehand who do you want to see the Raptors draft at 19 in particular and yeah let me know your full thoughts down below hit a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you are new that is it for me guys as always thanks so much for watching Leave us a five-star review wherever you get this podcast. Drop a like and subscribe on your way out. That is it for me. It's Luke signing off. As always, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you all again in the next one.